So hello there guys, um, you know that recently I've been playing this game called Tower of Fantasy and unfortunately I'm here to tell you the good news, um, Tower of Fantasy is actually fun, it's actually fun to play and um, now of course you know the reason why I'm that sad because it's just unfortunate that the potential of how you know PSO2 NGS could have been lies in something that is a mobile game instead and it's just really really sad for me because looking at and playing Tower of Fantasy as a you know PSO2 player just feels like such wasted opportunities that Sega could have done with the PSO2 franchise you no know, like they actually did the whole, you know, open world thing and the whole, you know, content adding into the game. And recently it has been pretty good. But on content low times, it's just, it's, there's just nothing else for you to do after, you know, doing like several activities in the game and that's it. You can just, you know, throw away the game and you'll be fine. You can just return tomorrow and, and it'll be like nothing, nothing has changed. However, stuff like, for example, however in like uh, Tower of Fantasy, after even with all those, you know, content gates from day one and day two and day three and so on, it actually is starting to get better in, with time because, you know, the higher level that you get, the more modes you unlock and the more modes you can actually play, the more materials and the more stuff that you can actually grind for, the more goals you can actually achieve in the game. I know it actually applies for a lot of mobile games where they actually force you to grind certain things and here and there. But for the most part, you know, those grinds are very boring and they are usually like a turn-based kind of a gameplay or it's usually skippable or outable. So, you know, it doesn't really, you know, make it like a real game at all for me. But Tower of Fantasy? Oh wow, that's actually a different, whole different story. Like, the only way that you can actually clear all this content is to play through it. And yeah, there's just no cap on it. There's no like automatic uh, option for you to press and then there's no like, you know, um, skip function for you unless you're in the story modes. The, the, the rest of the content for the most part is just, you have to play the content. And that's what make a game become a game, you know? Um, not like just a game that looks good with no substance in the story and so on and whatnot. I mean, I, I understand players who actually still prefer Genshin Impact, you know, over everything else because of how smooth and how nice the graphics in Genshin Impact look like. But to be frank, I'm not, uh, I'm not a visual kind of a person. If you know what I mean. Like, if you ask me, the base PSO2 doesn't really look good at all. But, you know, I still enjoy it because it's it's still a very great game underneath all it. You know, the gameplay, the, the characters, the storyline and everything is just so good that I can't really put down that kind of a game even after like 10 years, you know, of playing that game. But... But then, you know, there's players who actually, you know, like Genshin Impact where the character model looks pretty good, the animation looks very, very smooth, they're dancing when they're attacking, stuff like that. I know, you know, those are actually a merits of a game on how they present the game to the audience. I understand that, but at the same time, if you are a true gamer at the core, you understand that deep down inside you are not you're not supposed to enjoy a game that only looks good am i right if you are only playing a game because of how it looks then you might as well just watch a movie because it's literally the same thing you might as well just watch an animation or watch anime or watch a movie because you're literally just a spectator you're not you're not playing a game to actually enjoy the gameplay to actually enjoy the content you are basically just trying to just move through the motion linearly or you're just trying to play a game linearly instead of like uh, playing a game 
and enjoy it as what it is, you know. So, how will fantasy actually give this antithesis of like Genshin Impact in such a way that you don't have to look good, you don't have to look as good as the counterparts, but you can at least improve on things that the other game doesn't improve on. For example, gameplay, for example, content substances, for example, like um, in-game activities that you can do, mini-games, secrets, you know, um, uh, free-to-play friendliness in the gacha system, and so on. And, and if you add up all of these things together, Tower of Fantasy is actually a very, very good game. And it's just... I'm just really, really glad that Tower of Fantasy launched in global because there's so many mobile games and, you know, they, they're always hyping up their launches here and there with a lot of pre-registration rewards and stuff, stuff and so on. But Tower of Fantasy is probably like the only game that I think I might play for a long term. Like there's a lot of mobile games releasing recently that is probably like looks much prettier than Tower of Fantasy in terms of like their character design of the characters and the gacha and stuff and whatnot. But in gameplay wise though, they all lose to this game. Like I'm serious. It's it's not like a competition at all. Like tell me, is there any other gameplay modes that is actually much better than the action gameplay? Of course not. The only the closest example I can even give to you is probably PSO2 or New Genesis and yeah, that's it. That's the only game that is comparable to this and is much more free to play friendly. But other than looking much better than Tower of Fantasy, it's just that the game loses to Tower of Fantasy in terms of content wise, you know, the substance wise. And that's just a very painful reality that I'm currently having to face, you know, when playing Tower of Fantasy. Because they are literally gating the content. And yet, the gameplay, you know, playing casually with that gated content is still much more fun than you playing in New Genesis. You know, that's just the unfortunate truth that I, want, I wanted to bring out. And I wanted to, you know, talk about the emptiness feeling that you actually get from playing New Genesis in comparison to Tower of Fantasy. So, you know what? It's a good thing. That's why when I say it when before, you know, Tower of Fantasy launched, I actually created a short video on why I'm talking about why everybody, why every content creator on, of New Genesis is actually talking about Tower of Fantasy so much. It's because I'm afraid that, you know, Tower of Fantasy might be better than the main game that I'm playing now. And unfortunately, that's the truth. I, I disregard that this game is a mobile game or it's just a gacha game. I know, I know, you know, but New Genesis is also have their own gacha in terms of like the cosmetics and stuff. But I know New Genesis, you know, you can cosplay as everything. You can do crazy stuff with the customization in that game. But in terms of main content wise, I'm just going to be like how Tectone said in terms of like how he felt on Genshin Impact in comparison to like Power Fantasy, I'm going to say the same thing. This game is a good game. It's it's actually a decent game if you skip through all of the, you know, the negative uh, aspects of the game. Because as a gameplay player, in terms of like as a non-visual player, it's a very excellent MMORPG or it's just a very excellent online RPG game. So in the end, you know, I know a lot of people are probably like going to have uh, bad hate on this video or have some bad opinions of this game, but really, really, honestly, after playing this game for like more than, you know, more than like several days onwards and like playing on two different servers and stuff and whatnot, I just realized that if the game doesn't have this lag issues or the server issues and latency issues, this would be like a great game for you to play on your phone. Like, I genuinely have been waiting for a mobile phone game that is actually, you know, decent enough for you to play and free to play friendly enough for you to actually stick with it for long term. And this is probably it. This is the reason why I am still believing in, you know, mobile games. 
this Tower of Fantasy actually have shown me that a mobile game can be good enough and the mobile game shouldn't be like all about the gacha. It, it shouldn't be all about the pay to win aspect of the game. It could have been a it can be a very good free to play friendly and fun online game as well that you can bring it everywhere. You can enjoy it anytime when you are free, when you are working or when you are you know not free or you are not able to access to your consoles or you're not able to access to your PC and have a very great time. This is like the game that you know I can actually showcase to my friend when I'm playing on my phone. This is the first time I'm saying this. I know I'm actually, you know, kind of like biased to Tower of Fantasy, but believe me, I I have my expectations very, very low, you know, on this game. And it actually blew past it. And I believe it actually deserves the recognition that it's actually getting on its launch. Aside from the graphical fidelity and the scandals that this Order company has done in the past, you know what? Give Tower of Fantasy a chance. Try to, you know, play the game blind and, and try to enjoy the game as it is. And you understand what all those content creators have been telling you since day one of Tower of Fantasy and the reason why they have played since the China server until today. The reason why all those content creators are so passionate about covering the contents of this game because it's just that good it's not like the previous mobile games that i've seen like in the past no this this set a precedence for a good mobile game from day one and i i'm actually very glad that tower of fantasy exists and i wish there are more games like this in the future aside from the you know the gacha gating and the pay to win aspects of course so this is just a video that I wanted to make because it's just, I, I just feel like if I don't make a video like this, I'm just going to miss out on the honesty that I really wanted to state out about this game. Tower of Fantasy, in a nutshell, is it's actually a good online action RPG to play. And it's also enjoyable if you're playing it on your PC as well. So do what you will. Just play the game as casually as you wanted to or as hardcore as you wanted to when you are able to and I'll assure you that you have a great time playing this game because it's not just another open world game that has nothing on the open world it's not just a shallow open world where they you have, after, after completing all the content you just have nothing to play no, it's actually a decent game like I can seriously say it from now on that you know if you are trying to you know be the best you can do it. If you're trying to just enjoy a game, an open world kind of an experience, you can definitely do it. And looking at the rate of the contents that they are actually coming out with on the 2.0 and in the future, it's just everything is just aligning for them. And it's the, the game is probably going to be much better after the global release. And I'm actually hoping, wishing them the best. And I wish, you know, Sega can learn some open world design ideas from them so that they can implement stuff that is actually good in Tower of Fantasy into New Genesis if possible. Because to be frank, New Genesis is fine by itself, but the issues that actually cause it can be fixed with some of the things that is available in Tower of Fantasy. And that's just the unfortunate truth that I really wanted to say out, but please at least, you know, make the game somewhat decent like Tower of Fantasy and I believe, you know, New Genesis can be a better game. I mean, since, you know, New Genesis has been taking ideas like from Genshin Impact, taking ideas from Breath of the Wild, taking ideas from Elden Ring, you might as well just, you know, take some ideas from Tower of Fantasy as well then. This is what I wanted to, you know, say for this game and you know in comparison to what it can take away from you know tower fantasy for new genesis i know some people is going to you know hate this video or you know thumbs down this video but this is my honest talks 
this is literally what I really wanted to talk about after playing Tower of Fantasy for quite a while. And no... Okay, if there's any errors in my talks or if there's any issues with my thinking, maybe, you know, leave them down in the comments below and tell me if I'm wrong. Because I really wish I am wrong about Tower of Fantasy. I really wish that New Genesis was actually much more fun than Tower of Fantasy. If you are able to convince me that, please, please do so in the comments below. Because this game, so far, is actually pretty fun. And you just can't deny it, alright? I know there is a lot of, you know, the, the gameplay that is locked behind the gachas. Yes, I know that is a negative trait, but in terms of like the core game itself, and the rewards that you can actually get from the open world, it's just way better than what New Genesis currently has. And you just cannot deny it when you play it. So, that's just my thoughts. And I don't really want to pull this any further on because this is just my personal opinion of the game and how it compares to ESO2 New Genesis. So, it just... I, I believe the reason why as well is because Tower of Fantasy reminded me of like the original Fantasy Star Online and maybe even base PSO2 more as well because of how the game design is. And I'm really glad that we have a better example of how an open world can be executed in comparison to New Genesis now. So that, you know, PSO2 New Genesis can actually improve as an open world game. This is what the takeaway that I really wanted to say about this game for everybody out there. So thank you for watching this video until this point. Uh, if you like my content, if you like my takes, please, you know, uh, do like and subscribe for my channel so that, you know, I can make more content like this. And I know most of my videos are basically like commentary, but um, sometimes, you know, making guides for certain games are really just saturated in the YouTube algorithm, I believe. So I really wanted to make something much more different in terms of like the style of video that I wanted to make. So. Thank you for watching and sayonara. See you next time.